Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Midnight for the fellas out on the East Coast, but could not pass up an opportunity to talk about what we just saw from Dan Landing in the Oregon Ducks, absolutely taking it to Oregon State, 31 to 7 victory. Ton of things to talk about. Bo Nix, I mean, making that Heisman candidate argument even more strong. But Dill, my biggest takeaway is you look at that front seven from the Oregon Ducks last year and how this game played out. And you fast forward 12 months to what we just saw, an Oregon front seven, take it to one of the best offensive lines in college football. Massive statement made by the Oregon Ducks. And you look at this team and you look at the landscape of college football. This is that team that you do not want to see in the college football playoffs. Because you look at the boxes you got to check, a Heisman Trophy candidate and Bo Nix, dominant offensive line, ton of playmakers on offense and the defense playing like that. This team is one of the most dangerous teams in college football. Really excited to get into what we saw from the game. Before we do, just want to say thank you to you guys and a special shout out to the Oregon Duck fans. This has been a program we love talking about. Dan Lanning, Bo Nix, and what they've been doing, but the amount of support from the Oregon Duck fans has been absolutely amazing. Ton of go Ducks in the comments section. Can't thank you for rocking with the fellas. If you guys do enjoy the content and you want to support the boys, consider subscribing to the channel, Dale. Going to give you the tee box here. Oregon Ducks taking care of business. How are we feeling here? Yeah, and I think anyone who's watched these two teams play, like you kind of knew that the team speed on offense for Oregon was going to be a problem and how good they are at creating space and exploiting defenses. And it obviously was. I mean, Johnson and Franklin. Johnson especially, what a game for him. He was so dominant, so difficult to deal with. But that defensive front, like that front seven as a whole, but especially that defensive line, that's the type of game you need from that defensive line. That's been the one unit I think we've talked about. Like, it's obviously gotten better, but I don't think you've seen a dominant play. I think against USC and now against Oregon State, you've seen two games that make me think, like, man, this is a very good defensive line, and that's the type of way they need to play if they're going to kind of hit It's the Dan Landon effect, baby. Like, there's no better guy in the country at (laughs) developing players in the front seven on that defensive line than Dan Landon. We said, what does this defense do need to do to take that next step. And we pointed at Brandon Dorless and Jordan Birch as being, I mean, both guys who are going to be playing in the NFL next year, two of the best edge rushers and defensive linemen in general that you see across the country. They've taken that step. And what you just saw against an offensive tackle and Talisi Fuaga, who is going to be a top 20 pick in the NFL draft, Dorch or Brandon Dorless and J- J- uh, Jordan Birch won that matchup against one of, if not the best offensive tackle in the country. You look at the numbers, I don't think many people are talking about this. Damian Martinez, we all remember what happened last year in Corvallis. Damian Martinez goes 13 carries for 38 yards, averaging 2.9 yards per carry. You talk about night and day transformations from this front seven. We saw that on full display today. In making plays, I mean, for Popo Mave, Casey Rogers, both had three tackles apiece. Jordan Birch throwing in four tackles. I mean, like making more plays. And that was the big thing for me, I think, especially in that middle. Because you're right, Dorless and Birch have been very good against the run. You can tell by looking at those two that they're going to be a problem against the run. But for that defensive tackle group throwing Taimani, I thought he had a very, very good game. Like they were being disruptive in the way you want, I think, defensive linemen in modern day football to be disruptive, not just eating up space and like freeing things up for your linebackers, but making a ton of plays. I thought you you mentioned the tackles. Like those tackles were at or behind the line of scrimmage. Like a ton of run stops, a ton of negative plays. And that is how you take it to Oregon State. Like the, the recipe for Oregon State to have success on offense. We all know it. They were averaging five plus yards per carry heading into this one. One of the top marks in the country. The big key to this game was winning on first and second down, forcing DJU to be a pocket passer, lay off the play action. I mean, Oregon executed this to a massive degree, and you got to give a shout out to the defensive backs. Like, obviously, a little bit banged up in that unit. A guy like Dante Manning, who you haven't seen a ton of this year, is stepping up in a big way. Evan Williams playing with the <laughs> that club on Evan Williams, and I've never seen a bigger one in my life. Played a massive game. You talk about a complete showing from the defense, the defensive line, the backers, the guys in the back end you saw tonight, and I think that's a result of Oregon State only scoring seven points here. And that's a huge part. Like To have Kyrie Jackson kind of come back into this lineup and, and be healthy and play a game like that, like 
that's what you were looking for because he he was that guy. I mean, he was very good in that Washington game up and until that injury, and, and you kind of need him to come back that way. And hopefully, Jaleel Florence gets back in. But you are starting to see some of that depth that I think was a very much a problem last year. You can go to a guy like Bridges. You can go to a guy like Manning and really not miss a beat. I mean, they were very sticky, getting their hands on balls, taking it away. Yeah, that I like very impressed by what they're doing. And, and it's not just like the play on the field because they had top line decent play last year, but to have the depth they can and withstand these injuries through a long season, like that's and it's only it's only getting better for them. Like you see the recruiting happening, and that's how you build depth. You have that top end talent, now you have depth. And you talk about a team that wants to win a national championship, you're gonna have to withstand some injuries. The Oregon Ducks are doing that to a high degree. No, we went what? We're six minutes in. We haven't talked about the offense. Hanging 31 against a very good Oregon State team, 480 total yards. You take a look at what Bo Nix does. You talk about a Heisman candidate kind of game. 31 rushing yards for a touchdown, 367 and two touchdowns. The ball barely hit the ground all night. Let's talk a little bit about this Oregon offense here. Yeah, and this was probably as good as I've seen Bo Nix play. And we've seen him play very, very well, but just Plenty. being – as in command as he was like again you kind of mentioned it like no real mistakes it just played almost a perfect game and to me it was the Tess Johnson show I mean we've kind of seen the flashes of him but for him to just go play a wall-to-wall game where he's so dominant and guys it's not just like making the catches but how what he's doing after he catches it making those plays like to have him kind of compliment be able to work the middle of the field as they try to push the ball downfield to Troy Franklin, who they were clearly trying to take away. I mean, you saw safeties over the top in pretty much every play. And then you, yeah, you allow Tess Johnson to work the middle. You allow Terrence to do, do his thing. When you cool. have a trio of guys, like when you have two, like that trio, the Bo Nix, Tess Johnson, Troy Franklin trio, we talk about batteries. Bo Nix and Troy Franklin are one of the best wide receiver quarterback batteries that you've seen in college football, arguably the best. But when you add a guy like Tess Johnson, like you said, Teams are going to try to take Troy Franklin away because he's one of the best wide receivers in college football. And if I don't see him starting to get mocked in the first round, going to lose my mind. But when you have a guy like Tez Johnson, okay, put a safety over top of Troy Franklin. That gives Tez Johnson more room to operate. And when you give a guy like Tez Johnson more space, score one for the 160 pounders for the boys, Tez Johnson, I mean, just a difference maker when he has that football in his hands. And they were able to do all of that with a run game that, again, wasn't necessarily clicking tonight. And you've seen them play a very dominant game up front. And that is, in fairness, the strength of Oregon State. Yeah, and they, they, they definitely to tried to take it away. And I think that's why Bo Nix had so much success. Is You saw a lot of loaded boxing. We said, we're not going to let Bucky Irvin go for a buck 50 like he's been doing to every other team. We're going to try to make Bo Nix beat us. The tough part about stopping this Oregon offense, you want to try to stop Bucky Irving, Jordan James, yeah, you got Bo Nix, Troy Franklin, Tez Johnson, and a laundry list of other guys. Trayshawn Holden, I thought, had a really good game as well. It's what makes this team so hard to stop. You look at them. One of the most efficient and explosive rushing attacks in the country. And then, yeah, the passing attack, Bo Nix, historically accurate season. It's an offense that you just can't really stop. Yeah, if Bo Nix plays like that and they protect the way they protected it, I'm kind of with you. I just don't see what the answer is to stopping them because they have too many ways to hurt you. And- And one other, before we close out, late for the fellas, Coach Stein, whatever that dude, and it helps when you have Bo Nix and Troy Franklin and Tess Johnson, but he has a laundry. It's hard to be a bad offensive coordinator when you have all those weapons, but everything he draws up, everything he schemes up works. You talk about a guy who is absolutely in his bag calling plays. That is what you're seeing from Coach Stein. And when you match the play calling with the execution and star power Oregon has, that's when you're seeing putting up 31 points. It could have been more. You go back to the Arizona State game. They had to pull Bo Nix, what, early third quarter because he was running up the score. Still, this, I, I guess it's just fast forward, get me to this Oregon-Washington game because it's going to be one of the best games that we see in all of college football. Wanted to hop on, talk about this Oregon team. Many of you guys already know how big of fans we are, but this is an Oregon team that's one of the most dangerous in the country firing the fellas up, and you look at this Oregon team going into the Big Ten under Dan Lanning. This is going to be really fun. Appreciate the Oregon fans for rocking with the fellas again. You guys have shown a ton of support to the boys. Can't thank you enough. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to you all later.